Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little black subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that black subscribe button. Really does help our audience grow. Really does help our channel grow. Really does help and mean more than you could possibly know. So go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button. Also, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook and the Betfred Sportsbook app. Bet 50 on any game. Get 250 in free bets. Thank you again to Betfred. Thank you again to you. Now, here is the video that you came here for. Who want to switch gears? And I want to go ahead and talk about the other very, 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 very big piece of transfer portal news. This one also came out of the Big Ten as well. We obviously just discussed a moment ago Caleb Love making his decision to leave North Carolina. Where was he going to end up? Well, on Friday, he commits to Jawan Howard at Michigan, a big, big, big move that could have ramifications in the Big Ten. But I bring it up because Caleb Love transferring to Michigan was not the only big piece of transfer portal news as it pertained to the Big Ten. That is because later in the weekend, Kalel Ware, seven-footer, former McDonald's All-American, originally from the state of Arkansas, uh, spent last year at Oregon, was actually a projected top 10 pick going into this season. He made his transfer portal decision. Again, left Oregon, originally from Arkansas. My understanding is the Hogs did want him back if he was interested. Nate Oates wanted him. He uh, had a visit uh, scheduled for this weekend to Alabama, but went ahead and canceled it, and it's for one simple reason. It is because on this weekend, over the course of the last couple of days, Kalel Ware, right now, made the decision to transfer to, drum roll please, Kalel Ware is headed to Indiana, Bloomington, Indiana, to play for my boy Mike F. and Woodson. You can get your Mike F. and Woodson t-shirts. Link is in the show description, AaronTorresOnline.com. But you talk about a major, 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 Big time decision that could have major ramifications in the Big Ten. And frankly, a player that Indiana needed. This is as big as any piece of transfer portal news that we will get this offseason. So let's get into it because Kalel Ware is a fascinating player. Okay. Like I said, seven footer. He's originally from the arc from the state of Arkansas. Goes to Oregon this past year, was a McDonald's All-American last year. As I said, projected top 10 pick. And it's because he had all the physical tools that any player could ever want at seven feet tall, seven foot tall, super athletic, elite rim protection ability, um, ability to move, you know, up and down the floor. He's got a nice little shooting stroke when uh, he does go ahead and shoot it, but goes to Oregon, flies cross country. It just doesn't work out. Right. And sometimes this happens in college basketball where wanted to get away from home, wanted to try something different. But he goes to an Oregon school that had a loaded front court. And Folly Dante was one of the best players in the Pac-12 this year at the center spot. Nathan Biddle, a sophomore from Oregon, another really talented player. So he kind of gets lost in the shuffle. But I actually think when you look at the stats, they don't jump out to you. But it speaks to how good he was. So this kid in less than 16 minutes of play per game this year. So under 20 minutes of play. Average six and a half points, four and a half rebounds. And almost two blocks per game, 1.8 blocks per game, okay? So I'm not great at math, but if you extrapolate that out to 40-plus minutes, we're talking about a guy as a freshman in the Pac-12 who would have averaged something close in the neighborhood of, what, 16, 15 points, 10, 12 rebounds per game, and about four, four and a half blocks per game extrapolated out over 40 minutes. I understand that's not how the world works. I understand he didn't play 40 minutes, but it shows you that this kid is just scratching the surface of his potential. Now, part of the reason that he is in the portal didn't work out at Oregon, and I will readily admit uh, motor has been an issue in the past for this kid. But I was thinking about this. If this kid is serious about basketball, and I don't I don't personally know him. I've been in interview settings with him and whatever. But if this kid is serious about basketball, I can't think of a better place then Indiana to head to to play college basketball, and here's why. You are going to Indiana, one in the Big Ten, competitive, national TV, all that, all the stuff that comes with playing in the Big Ten. But you're also going to a place to play for a former NBA head coach in my boy Mike F. and Woodson. If you're serious about being a pro, and as a sophomore, listen, 
I don't want to say the clock is ticking. He's probably 19, 20 years old. He's got plenty of time to develop. But, you know, former high school teammate of Nick Smith Jr. Nick Smith is going pro. Uh, other guys from his age group are going pro. If you're serious about being an NBA player, go play for a guy who coached in the NBA, knows what it takes to get you there, knows what it takes uh, to get you playing at the highest level. And then, oh, by the way, you get to do it on the big stage, uh, you know, Indiana, Big Ten, Fox TV, one of the biggest brands in college basketball. From an on-the-court perspective, it makes sense. I'm sure from the NIL opportunities, it makes a ton of sense. And I'm just telling you, this is a near-perfect fit for this kid. What I would also say, it's a near-perfect fit because unlike Oregon, they really, 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 really need him at Indiana. For people who don't follow Indiana basketball, and my guess is a lot of people listening probably do, there's not much on the roster going into next year. That's not Mike Woodson's fault. It's not anybody's fault. It's just the reality of where we are in college basketball. Trace Jackson Davis, he's going to go pro, and he should. Was a historically great Indiana basketball player, deserves every accolade that he ever got, but he was there for four years, two different coaching staffs. It's time for him to move on and try something different. Jalen hood Shafino. Declares for the NBA draft. He should. He's been there forever. He deserves the opportunity. He's going to be, I believe, probably a lottery pick, if not certainly in the top 20. Race Thompson, out of eligibility. Uh, Miller Cop, out of eligibility. Tamar Bates, who I thought actually came on very nicely late last season, decides to enter the transfer portal, maybe looking for a new opportunity somewhere else. So you go across the board. Really, this is the Indiana roster right now, pre Kalel Ware. And, and and there's a player or two, but you kind of get the point. Xavier Johnson, who will be a fifth year guy, and they're not even. My understanding is they're, they're they're you know he's going to try to get a waiver to play. He got hurt early this year. That's not even guaranteed at this point. Although I expect him to get it. So Xavier Johnson coming off injury, Malik Renault, uh, who had a very good freshman year this year. I think he's going to step into that Trace Jackson Davis kind of hybrid four role. But other than that, there's not very much. And so if you're Kalel Ware and you need a stage to prove how good you are, this is it. This is the opportunity that you're looking for. And so I love this from every aspect. I love it from the coaching perspective. I love it from the uh, roster perspective. And I think what's most important to me now is that as Mike Woodson fills out the rest of his roster, yes, you need bodies. Like everybody needs bodies. But you have a good core to sell, right? If you're looking for wing scoring, shooting, whatever, whatever you may be looking for in the portal, the core that I just listed is a pretty darn good core going forward. You got your point guard in place with Xavier Johnson. You got your center in place with Kalel Ware, who I just mentioned. Um, you know, on top of that, and, and this was a guy that I should have mentioned, you know, Trey Galloway. Uh, Trey Galloway, six foot four, is going to be a key player on the wing. But again, the, the pieces are coming together, but it doesn't change the fact that you needed bodies. And now this is just the point I'm trying to make is this, is that as you go into the portal to look for other pieces, you now have a roster to sell to everybody else. Hey, come here with a, an established point guard. Come here with an established low post player shot blocker. And then from there, you fill out the roster. Trey Galloway can score on the wing. So I love everything about it. And then the final thing that I would say is this. Let's give a little credit to Mike F. and Woodson, okay? Because listen, I'm guilty. Anybody who's followed this journey between me and Mike Woodson over the last couple of years, you know it's been a, a, a bumpy relationship between us two. And I bring it up because, listen, I questioned the hire when it happened three off seasons ago, but it was because I didn't know, is this guy going to be in the NIL portal world as dedicated as he needs to be in recruiting? to get guys, frankly, like Kalel Ware. Well, he proved me wrong off season one when he got Tamar Bates out of high school, when he convinced Trace Jackson to come back, uh, Miller Cop out of the portal, all that good stuff. But I bring it up to say, this is as big and as important, and it's not just because they got Kalel Ware, but it's because of who they beat to get Kalel Ware for this, kid, for, for this transfer. Alabama wanted him. Alabama's coming off an SEC championship, regular season championship, SEC tournament championship, Sweet 16. Um, Nate Oates has an established brand. He's sending now big guys to the NBA. He sent guards for the last couple of years. Now Noah Clowney's going pro. So this was a guy that Alabama wanted. This was a guy that Arkansas wanted. The Arkansas brand speaks for itself. Kalel Ware uh, is, of course, from the state of Arkansas. My understanding is Kentucky at least made 
um, ancillary calls to him to see about an interest level. So when you're talking about a Big Ten team led by Mike Woodson beating those kinds of teams, I don't know what else there is to say other than that this is a mega, mega, mega move for Mike Woodson and for Indiana. Congrats, Hoosiers fans. Uh, you got your guy. I love this addition of Kalel Ware to the Indiana program. And as I said, baby, Mike Effin Woodson, you can't see it on this Zoom call, but you can get your shirt. Link is in the show description. How about my boy, Mike Effin Woodson?